All right, so here's another example that's an attempt to try and understand exactly um, the meaning of curl. Um, this is borrowed from an exercise in, uh, in Stewart's calculus textbook. Um, so the, uh, the picture here is that you've got, you've got a spinning disk, okay? So this is some kind of, of, of rigid body, so some solid, it's spinning around. Um, and so every point on this disk, right? So we can think of, so here's a particular point, maybe we call that point uh, um, P, let's say. Uh, every point on the disk is going around in a circle, right? And the radius, of course, depends on how far out you are from the z-axis. The z-axis is the axis of rotation here. So we've got the distance d, the distance from the z-axis to that point, um, telling you how far around you go. Now, I can talk about sort of the tangential velocity of that point, right? So basically I could, I could draw the, the circle in here, kind of going around. So the circle of the, the circular path at that particular point on the disk is gonna, is gonna follow, right? And, and so the velocity, it's hard to draw it here, uh, that velocity is tangent to the circles. So that velocity is, is, you know, in the, kind of, it's perpendicular to the board, right? It's, it's parallel to the, to the plane of this disk, right? And so we've got that t tangential velocity. We've also got the angular velocity. So the angular velocity, right, the vector quantity points, you know, um, perpendicular to the plane of rotation, right? It points along the axis of rotation. And so it's just given by the angular speed omega times k, right? The, the unit vector pointing straight up. Uh, so don't worry if you, haven't, if you haven't encountered this before, it's fine. Uh, take my word for it. Uh, the relationship between the, at least the tangential speed and the tangential um, and, and the angular speed is, is given here. So the, the speed at which this particle is moving is, is a product of the angular speed, so the rate of rotation, um, and measured in, I guess, radians per second, and the distance, right, the radius of the circle. So the radius times the angular speed gives you the, the tangential speed, right? Um, we also, this is not going to be important, but we also know that we can think of that tangential speed uh, as the time derivative of the position. That's another way to think about it, right? Okay. Now, um, there's this angle theta that's in here as well, uh, and the reason for that is, is I want to point one thing out, um, which is, so th there's going to be a claim here. So my claim is going to be that the, the tangential speed V is going to be given by a cross product. It's going to be given by the cross product of, of R and W. Let me double check. I want to make sure it's not supposed to be double cross R, W cross R. I might have got that wrong. Just double checking. Oh, I totally got it wrong. It's the other way around. Um, okay. Well, put a minus sign out front. That fixes it. Um, now, now that sign only really matters in terms of kind of clockwise versus counterclockwise. It's kind of a right-hand rule thing, right? Um, so the, the way to see that this works, I mean, we know, we know that this V is going to be either pointing kind of this way or that way, depending, you know, on this, right? You know, well, you can kind of see which way it's supposed to point, right? Uh, so certainly we can see that V is, is perpendicular to R and to Z, right? So as this kind of thing, as it goes around, right, V is always going to be perpendicular. So certainly um, it has the right direction, um, the question is, does it have the right magnitude? So let's see. Well, the magnitude of R cross omega, or, or omega cross R, I guess. Um, so remember the rule is that this should be the magnitude of R times the magnitude of, of W times sine theta, right? theta being here, because W points in this direction, okay? So theta is the angle between the two. Um, but we can, um, we can see from this diagram that R sine theta, right? R is kind of the hypotenuse of this little right-angled triangle. The opposite side has length D. 
So R sine theta is, is D. Um, and, and so this becomes, well, let's see, the magnitude of W. Well, the magnitude of W is just omega. Right? So that means that uh, this is going to be D times omega. Ah! That's the magnitude of V. Okay, so it has the right magnitude, it has the right direction, so this must be the right vector. Okay, aside from me getting my sign wrong. I'm a little rusty on my right hand rule. Fair enough, okay. So, so that tells me that I've got V is, is, so let's do it the right way around, W cross R. I can do this cross product. This is what? This is going to be, so this is omega k crossed with xi plus yj plus zk. Um, we could write the 3 by 3 determinant for this cross product if we wanted to, um, but you know, when, when you just have one component in one of your vectors, it's sometimes easier to just remember that the cross product is distributive. And then if you remember the relationships between them, uh, we're going to have, well, so it's going to be omega times x and then k cross i and then omega y, um, k cross j, and then omega z and k crossed with k. And now you just have to remember that, well, first of all, any vector crossed with itself is zero. So we know that's zero, zero vector. Um, k cross i, right? Remember that kind of the i, j, k, they kind of go around in this circle, right? Um, so i, j, k, they go around. So I cross J gives you K. K cross I gives me, ah, this is J, okay? What about K cross J? Well, K cross J, you go the wrong way around this circle. So you get I, but you get it with a minus sign. So what we get is we get minus omega Y I plus omega x j, right? We'll treat omega as a constant here. So assume it's going around at some constant speed. Okay, so we can think of this as now the velocity vector field for every point on this disk, right? So that gives us this vector field. So we've got these vectors going around and around and around and around and around, right? Um, given by this. What's the curl? Let's do that in blue. So what's the curl of V? So that's going to be given by letting del act via the cross product. So we get I, J, K, X derivative, Y derivative, Z derivative. And then the X component is minus omega y, the y component is omega x, the z component is zero. So if we carry out that cross product, what do we get? Well, for the i component, that's definitely zero. That's zero because this doesn't depend on z, right? For j, zero, zero. So the only thing that's left is the k component. And what do I get for the k component? I get, um, ddx of omega x, I get omega. And then I get minus ddy of minus omega y, I get minus minus omega. Oh, I get omega. Omega plus omega, I get two times omega times k, right? Which is two times w, right? And 
so here's another example showing you that curl is giving you this measure of rotational tendency, right? Because um, in this case here, the velocity vector field is, is keeping track of how everything is moving around. And when you compute the curl of that velocity vector field, what you get is, well, you get the angular velocity, I mean, up to a factor of two, right? Uh, and the angular velocity certainly is this measure of, of how things are going around, right? So if you do have something where everything is, in fact, just going around in circles, you, you get sort of an expected result when you compute the curl. Um, okay, so, so hopefully this kind of helps um, reinforce this idea of curl as a measure of rotation um, and gives you sort of another way to picture what's going on when you're calculating curl.